Amen, church. Amen. Why does a church feel as though they're going to a funeral? Why do we seem so... Cool. Hey, David, would you be so kind to of bring me a hymnal? The letter? It's cool. It's interesting because I have been impressed to preach about seasons. Jesus is the reason for this season. If you can blame the weather for how you feel, what's going to happen when fire is put next to your laurels? So if circumstances dictate how you will feel in life, then we will be most miserable people. I am thankful for the song, thankful for those who have served. Elder Philip, thank you for the prayer and interceding for us. Thank you, Elder Renaud. You actually preached a sermon by <coughs> highlighting what Solomon did. And I thank you. Thank you so very much. We are living in a time when we ought to be grateful and thankful for God's mercies. Amen. I have been struggling for the past week in what to present to God's people, including myself. And those of you who speak and preach know that it's not easy to prepare a sermon. There are some individuals who go on the internet and retrieve sermons and preach other messages that they have not experienced. And that has a significant effect on or lack thereof on the spirituality of others. You can only preach and speak what you have been experiencing experience for yourself. And this struggle during the week was so deep that I almost made a phone call for someone else to come and preach. But God always seemed to come through. Amen. And the title of this message is No Fluke. I'm not preaching about Jesus Christ in a manger because Jesus Christ is no longer a babe. Amen. Jesus Christ is interceding in glory for us today as a people. Amen. The season I want us to glean and look at are the seasons that you and I experience in life. Some of us are going through some hardships that, if truth be told, we would walk out of the church and walk away from Jesus Christ. Amen. But it's only because of pride and because of other circumstances that we still find ourselves in church. But I'm here to let you know it's the spirit of the living God Amen. that is keeping you in church. Amen. Because he wants to say. Before I get into the message, and I won't be long, you all know I'm not a long preacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. Well, I, I'm not a long person that preach because I've learned a long time ago from a very well respected pastor who I admire and has mentored me. And if you're videotaping this and it's going to go on YouTube, I want to acknowledge Pastor Winston Stevenson. Under his tutelage, I have learned so much as a young man. And because of his ministry, I have been groomed today as a person who loved to preach the word of God and minister to God's people. <coughs> Before we get into the word, let us sing, have thine own way, have thine own way. Number five, six, seven. I believe that we can do nothing without the function of the spirit to function. Amen. And I am asking God to have his way.
humble the servant so that you can speak to your people. We give you the honor and the glory in Jesus' name.
Ecclesiastes reflected on the human perspective during his twilight years, Brother Garfield. And Solomon said in the book of Ecclesiastes, there were 14 reflections that Solomon looked at. And in those 14 reflections, there were positives and there were negatives. Quickly, he said, there was a time to born and there's a time to die. He went on, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. These are seasons that Solomon reflected on that every one of us must pass through. We all must pass through a season. Our seasons are different. It's how you deal with your season that will determine if you get to the next season. For example, Sharika, we are in winter. If you have not prepared for winter, you're going to freeze. So you will not be able to get to spring because you did not prepare for the winter. You understand the point now? So if you pass through this season of winter, by God's grace, you will make it to spring. But we pass through spiritual seasons. And Solomon went through the 14 seasons. A time to plant, a time to pluck up, a time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep, a time to laugh. Those are seasons. A time to mourn, a time to dance. I mentioned this scripture one time, those of you from Stony Brook University, welcome. At one of our churches in Brooklyn, I said to the young people, there's a time to dance. And one person said, we can dance? I said, yes, you can dance. You can do the holy dance. Oh, you all are so holy, you don't know there's a holy dance. Amen. There's a holy dance. When you go back to the book of Exodus of the Philip, who danced? Amen. 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 Um, in Exodus, Mary, Mary, Mary. 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 Miriam danced. I wasn't there. I don't know how she danced, but she danced. The Bible says she danced because of what? Victory. So when you gain the victory, do your holy dance. And listen, some of some some people dance a certain way. It's very provocative. That's not the dance the Bible is talking about. When you dance in a provocative way, you are evoking certain evil spirits. Oh, your church got quiet. Yes. <laughs> How you carry yourself will determine if the evil angels will walk with you or not. So if you're dancing the holy dance, you're shaking the day the devil off. True that. All right, let me move on. I just wanted to plug that in. There's a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones. Those are seasons. A time to embrace, a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away, a time to rent, a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. I subscribe to you that we are in the last season of Earth's history. Amen. And it is the season of war. Amen. We are at war spiritually. Yes. That is the season I want to, 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 to look at today. But I also want to leave us with this. That there is a season of peace. Amen. You see the contrast. The contrast is war and peace. So therefore, whatever spiritual war you are going through, if the Prince of Peace is in your life, Amen. then therefore, war will cease. Amen. Because Solomon says, there's a time, and time means at some point it will end. Our oh, church, Amen. turn your Bibles to the book of Luke, 
chapter 4. And I'll break it down to you. There's a beautiful story in Luke chapter 4. We'll concentrate on Luke chapter 4. But the story is also told in Matthew chapter 4. It's about Jesus. After his baptism, he was driven to the wilderness. Not by himself, but by the Spirit. And here's, here's what transpired. Luke chapter 4. Let's look quickly at verses 1 through 13. It says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days and tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing, and when they were ended, he afterward hungered. And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it be made bread. And Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me, and to whomever or whomsoever I will I give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, or shall be thine. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. And he brought him to Jerusalem, and set him on a pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest at any time thou shalt thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil, verse 13, when, when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Amen. Amen. Ah. He departed for a season. Which means that Jesus was experiencing a particular season. I'm jumping ahead here. But this is the, the, the message. Jesus was baptized. <coughs> when he was born, the angels announced. The wise men came to give gifts. It was a happy party, birthday party. And then he was offered up in the temple. And, and, uh, and everyone was thankful. The priest was, was happy that he saw the Messiah. Then Jesus started to, to, to grow, and, and, and when, when he went into the temple, uh, the, the, um, the leaders were astonished at his, his knowledge, and Jesus realized that he was the one, the chosen one. And he saw his cousin, John the Baptist, baptizing, and Jesus had to be baptized for righteousness' sake, not so much for himself, but for us. Amen. And after his baptism, he was driven into the wilderness to begin another season. And if you notice, he went into the wilderness. And there were three temptations. I'm going to go through them quickly. Three temptations. We must all pass through a season. And we must recognize that this story here in chapter 4 of, of Matthew and chapter 4 of Luke is the story that Jesus told being led into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan for a season. This is something that the church of the living God will go through. Amen. Amen. I want to hasten on to say this. That Jesus was tested in three areas and we will go through those three areas in a second. If we look quickly at verse 2. It says, being 40 days tempted of the devil, and in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hungered. <coughs> Jesus did not eat anything in 40 days. When you look at the, uh, the number 40, 40 days 
and 40 nights. The number recalls the experiences of who? Moses. If you go to book to the uh, book Exodus chapter 24 and verse 8, Exodus chapter 34 and 28, you will find that in 40 days, Moses was in the mount. He had a wilderness experience. Amen. They didn't know if he was going to come back or not. Amen. Then you had Elijah in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 8, who had a, a wilderness experience for 40 days, and Israel's 40 years in the desert, Deuteronomy 8, 23. I don't know about you, but, but many years ago, when I traveled south, I thought I was having a wilderness experience all alone, not knowing what to do with my young wife. Some of us pass through certain experiences and we wonder if God is really with us. Those wilderness experiences are the times when we can truly trust God because He is faithful. Jesus came to break the cycle of sin and blame by making peace for us with God through the blood of his cross. When we go on to the latter part of this journey here, we see the devil said to him, if thou be the son of God, command this stone that it, may, that, that it be made bread. You see, he was saying, if doubt, he's placing doubt, if, if you, if 